uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak here in this world hemodynamic workshop dear friends as you all are aware of the fact that invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring using arterial catheterization is one of the commonly performed bedside procedures in the icu during shock when non invasive blood pressure monitoring becomes unreliable today i will describe various techniques of cannulation especially the ultrasound technique which is becoming more popular and also the interpretations of various arterial waveforms the material of cannula is usually either polyurethane or teflon there is no statistically significant differences in the ease or speed of cannulation of either polyurethane or teflon cannuli polyurethane is softer hence requires a guide wire for the insertion there is another catheter which is now it is becoming popular known as integrated arterial catheter which allows for quick and easy insertions with high success rate it is a guide wire needle cannula assembly which is quick and easy to perform which site is the best for arterial access radial ulnar brachial femoral there are many sites but the radial artery at the wrist is the most preferred site as the hand has usually good collateral supply and it is easy to access and maintain when the patient is on high dose vasopressor therapy the radial arterial site underestimates the intra arterial blood pressure monitoring and therefore femoral arterial site is advisable to use in such scenario to optimally titrate the vasopressors what are the various techniques to insert the arterial cannula basically there are two approaches for arterial cannulation the blind approach and ultrasound guided approach in blind approach the radial artery is palpated between the distal radius and the flexor carpi radialis tendon the arterial catheter with needle is inserted at a 30 to 45 degree angle towards the artery now depending upon the type of cannula three techniques have been described in the literature over the needle technique over the guide wire technique and over the needle and guide wire technique once there is a blood return the needle is advanced slightly in over the needle technique further to ensure the catheter has entered the vessel the needle is the needle angle is then lowered to 10 to 15 degree and the catheter is guided over the needle and advanced into the vessel in over the wire or seldinger technique initially insert the introducer needle without catheter into the artery once positive blood flow is obtained advance the guide wire through the needle and finally thread uh, the arterial catheter over the guide wire a third technique which is very popular nowadays is called integral guide wire technique in which a unique cannula needle guide wire assembly is used in which when blood backflow is observed in long hub the guide wire is advanced freely and then catheter is advanced over the guide wire associated with much less blood loss compared to previous two techniques ultrasound has made our lives easy this can be performed in the center where an ultrasound machine and the expertise in using ultrasound guided arterial line insertion is available success rate of radial arterial cannulation has been shown to be much higher with the use of ultrasound guided cannulation this technique is especially suitable for critically impatient with feeble pulse or no pulse in uh, patients who are on high vasopressor support the patient who are obese or the patient who have adiabatous uh, cannulation site this technique is very useful a stripe probe cover or a stripe glove may be used to cover the ultrasound probe as a barrier to prevent the cross contamination full aseptic precautions are taken during cannulation now two approaches of ultrasound guidance are commonly used the in plane approach and the out of plane approach using in plane approach the radial artery is scanned in plane the long axis of probe is kept in line with the long axis of artery so that it scans the longitudinal section of the artery the advantage of this approach is the real time visualization of tip of the needle in uh, entering inside the 
lumen. However, it requires good expertise to hold and stabilize the probe during the procedure. Out of plane approach is easier to learn and quick. In this method, the long axis of the probe is perpendicular to long axis of the artery in such a way that a transverse section of the artery is visualized on the ultrasound screen. Now the disadvantage is the loss of real-time entry if one is not careful about moving the probe in the direction of medial entry and may result uh, through and through puncture of the arterial wall, especially the posterior arterial wall and can lead to posterior wall hemorrhage. The target sign is the end point in this technique when one can see the bright spot inside the lumen of the artery. The success of either approach is heralded by pre and percentile backflow of the blood in the needle hub. The dynamic needle tip positioning is uh, recently described, which is quite useful for the traditional catheter over the needle type of arterial cannula. For the DNTP technique, the probe is placed in view, uh, in, in view the out of plane radial artery and its position is adjusted to place over the skin to bring the artery in the center of the ultrasound screen. Then the needle is inserted at a point of the skin which corresponds to middle mark of the probe and then the needle is advanced through the skin at an angle of approximately 30 degree until the tip is seen inside the center of the arterial lumen which is called target sign. Then the probe is moved one to two millimeter away from the insertion point until the tip of the needle just disappears from the screen. Then we advance the needle and catheter in, until the tip of the needle is just seen again. And these steps are repeated for about three to four times to ensure the catheter is three to four millimeter inside the arterial lumen and not just the needle. The transducer should be leveled using the clamps along the levostatic axis, which is the junction of the fourth intercostal space and mid axillary line. For every 10 centimeter below the plebostatic axis, the arterial line will add 7.4 millimeter of pressure, hence overestimates it. For zeroing, the transducer is open to air and the recorded pressure, that is atmospheric pressure, is used by convention as zero millimeter of mercury reference value. Now let's talk about damping. The damping indicates the tendency of an oscillating system to return to its resting state. Anything that takes energy out of the system results in the progressive diminution of the amplitude of oscillations. The natural frequency of the system may be measured in the clinical settings using the fast flush test or square wave test. The system is flushed with the high pressure aligned via the flush system. This generates an undershoot and overshoot of waves resonating at a natural frequency of the system. Now count the number of oscillation after the square wave. If the system is optimally damped, there will be only one or two oscillations before it returns to the tracing of uh, baseline tracing. If the, if the system is under damped, more than two oscillations will be seen. If the system is over damped, less than 1.5 oscillations will be seen. The main reasons for the under damped system are excessive to uh, to the length, multiple stop cocks, or connections and hyperdynamic circulations. The reasons for overdamped waveform commonly seen uh, uh, are air bubbles or blood clots overly compliant to being catheter kinks, stop box, no fluid in the flush back or low flush back pressure. In both of the above mentioned uh, damping situations, the mean arterial pressure will not change. So always rely on the mean arterial pressure now let's examine the normal arterial waveform first and then we will talk about the abnormal waveforms. So the normal uh, arterial trace has a systolic upstroke, which is formed by the forceful con contraction of uh, left ventricle, which ends at uh, the highest pressure, that is peak pressure, which corresponds to the systolic blood pressure. After peak blood pressure starts dropping until the aortic wall closes, which is manifested as a transient increase in the pressure. A notch appears, which is called digrotic notch, after which the pressure again falls to minimum baseline value, which is called diastolic blood pressure. So this is about normal trace. 
Now the area under this normal uh, uh, arterial curve is usually the stroke volume, which is recorded using the pulse contour analysis by uh, various cardiac output monitors. So that's very important. Now the deviations from this normal waveform can be seen in various critical illnesses and situations, which I would like to discuss over here. The systolic upstroke may be seen blunted in case of poor LV systolic function or aortic stenosis where stroke volume is very low. In such a case, pulse pressure will be narrow. In an opposite scenario where systolic upstroke is very prominent, resulting in systolic hypertension, typically seen in elderly patients, which has stiff arteries that results in reflected waves of resistance adding to the peak of the stole. Sometimes of stroke has a double peaks, which are commonly seen in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. The most important use of arterial waveform analysis is in the detection of the pulse pressure variation resulting from intermittent positive pressure ventilation in a patient who is on mechanical ventilator without any spontaneous respiratory effort. The initial increase in the intrathoracic pressure during the inspiration leads to a transient increase in the venous return to the left atrium because of the squeezing effect of, on the pulmonary or capillaries. The effects of intrathoracic pressure on the venous return are amplified in the presence of hypovolemia. Such patients are fluid responsive. In this example, uh, in this video, you could see the PPV of 35% and hence this patient is considered to be fluid responsive. In conditions where there is a large increase in the intrathoracic pressure, uh, such as in case of uh, uh, status of somaticals or in case of cardiac tamponade, where the filling of the heart is severely impaired, there is an exaggeration of normal inspiratory fall in systolic arterial pressure exceeding 10 millimeter of mercury, you would see this situation is called pulses paradoxes. Now the position of diacrotic notch may also be altered in many situations. More commonly, you would see in cases of septic shock or any vasodilated state, the diacrotic notch will move away further and sometimes merge with the baseline. However, if the patient is vasoconstricted, in cases of severe hypertension, the diacrotic notch will be high up in the trace almost near to P. The patient who is on IABP, you would see the second wave after systolic peak, which is called diastolic augmentation, which perfuses the coronary. So there could be uh, so many examples of abnormal waveform. I could not uh, collect many more because of shortage of time given to me. Now to summarize my lecture, these points you must remember. The arterial catheterization is an essential technique that must be learned by all trainees in anesthesia and intensive care. Various techniques have been described and choose any technique which suits to you. However, real-time ultrasonography is more popular among young intensivists. Observe carefully and recognize various abnormalities in arterial pacing and always relying on mean arterial pressure value which does not depend on dampening of the system. So thank you so much for your attention.